Everybody, welcome back to Leosity. This is the fourth in the Arachnid series. Um, going to be talking about Apillions, also known as Harvestmen, and often in my country at least known as uh, Daddy Longlegs, uh, which that's a common name that is applied also to cellar spiders and uh, crane flies, and so I really discourage people from actually using that language because when you use common names, you can be misapplied, and so it's better to use more scientific terms. And Apillions is the accepted term. Harvestman is a common name, but at least it doesn't get mixed up with anything. And even the name Harvestman is kind of interesting because uh, people in, I guess, medieval Europe, they noticed that the uh, Apillions, they kind of sort of look like stilted shepherds, because shepherds would actually use stilts. Um, that's that's actually where stilts come from, not for entertainment purposes. It's to get a better look at uh, sheep over hilly landscapes. So, yeah. Anyway, um, what, to, what to really talk about? Oh, well, let, let me start with the biggest myth. I think I may have covered this in a previous video, actually. But I hear this all the time. Oh, you know, uh, Daddy Longlegs, they're the uh, most venomous spider, but their, their fangs are too shallow to, to bite you. Well, no, they're uh, they're not spiders. They are arachnids, but they're not spiders. They are not venomous. Their chelicerae, like uh, some of the previously discussed members, like scorpions, are sort of more like chewing mouth parts rather than fang mouth parts, and so they do not inject venom. I think in one video I actually did say that they used venom and uh, to digest their prey, and that was uh, incorrect. Don't know what I was thinking with that. May may not have. I can't remember. But anyway. Um, in terms of even like self-defense, they have kind of limited options. They do that weird thing where they sway back and forth, and that confuses uh, prey. They play dead. They swarm, which is why you got so many like internet videos of people like dumping them on themselves. Which again, they're harmless. Like all it is is there's there's an eeriness to the texture and and the the overall pattern recognition, the way that they move, and and the fact that there's so many of them. But they're they're utterly harmless to human beings, so it's it's not a big deal. Um, and last case um, scenario, they will lose a limb to sort of get a predator after one of their legs, and then they'll just regenerate them. It's actually another interesting thing about uh, apillions is they. Uh, <laughs> In terms of limbs, it's it's difficult to explain this because I've I just spent the past four videos telling you that arachnids have four legs, or eight legs, four pairs of legs, and I did briefly mention that um, some larval, which is a misnomer, but that's the term that's widely accepted as larval, uh, ticks often have uh, six legs. Well, similarly, apillions, the juveniles which again may also be misnomered as, as, as larvae. Uh, larvae is really for metamorphic animals, but people often apply it to uh, uh, arachnids as well. Uh, even even when you're, you're gauging the age of uh, an arachnid, a lot of people will say L1, L2. Well, that means larvae. That's what the L stands for, uh, the stage of molts in their development. Well, you know, uh, that's not, I'm not going to split hairs on that. I'm just saying that that's, um, can lead to some confusion. Well, with harvestmen, uh, apillions, whatever you want to call them, they often start off life with two pairs of legs, four legs, sometimes six, and, and sometimes they grow six, and then ultimately, though, as adults, they have eight legs, like all other arachnids. Just very peculiar. And uh, as I previously mentioned, the mouth parts are chewing mouth parts, and the pedipalps are usually really small. Every now and again, you'll see one that has uh, sort of more antenna-form looking uh, pedipalps. But generally speaking, it's not it's not that notable. Um, yeah, the 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 urban legend is probably like the biggest issue. And it, if you're interested in studying arachnology and specializing in a particular class, really you can't go wrong with apillions because very little is known about them. I mean, they're they're very ancient. They're related to mites, and, and even that, like where they actually fit on the family tree for arachnids is kind of disputed. But, uh, I mean, we're talking like 400, 500 million years. So they've, they've been around a long, long time, 
and they would change tremendously within that time, and they're rather diverse. Uh, when I think of Apillions, I think of the very generic looking ones uh, in my neck of the woods, but there are some predatory ones that uh, really look bizarre, um, really beautiful and interesting animals. They actually kind of remind me of deep sea creatures that developed legs. Like when, when you look at their body, that you can it's easy to imagine them as being something more like a a free floating organism without the legs, like a whale or something. In fact, there's uh, in, in in the video game Subnautica, there's a a reef back leviathan, and one of the first things that I noticed about it was, I was like that looks just like a flipping apillion, but without legs. That's what it looks like. Um, and in terms of diet, very similar to mites in that sense. They eat a lot of things. Some of them are scavengers, some of them are predators, some of them really more herbivorous. Uh, the, the chewing mouth parts, again, even though they are chalicery, they, they give them a little bit more versatility in what they can and can't eat. Unlike, I mean, there's no such thing, like I've, I've mentioned before, all spiders are obligate predators. There's no such thing as a, a vegan spider. Um, it's kind of interesting that there's no such thing as a herbivorous scorpion or a scorpion that at least takes advantage of it because they have like I said similar mouth parts so I find that somewhat interesting I guess when you think about it if you're going to put all that effort and energy into creating a uh, venomous tail and pincers though you know it's kind of like a use it or lose it situation it would be be kind of silly to waste all that metabolic energy on those kinds of uh, that arsenal and then oh and you, you also you should eat spinach <laughs> like it would be it would be a bit peculiar uh, whereas Apillions, they don't have that kind of uh, line of defense and offense. They're they're just they're like little frisbees with legs. Uh, there's there's not a whole lot going on. They also have this interesting on many of them this raised platform in the middle of their body where their eyes are, and they have simple eyes like us. I've mentioned that before when I talk about arachnids in general. But because it's like this raised little platform with a with eyes on it, it is. And this is subjective, but it is just one of the goofiest looking things. I mean, they just look like little robots. Um, they they remind me of Wally -E or something. There's just something very unusual about their physiology. But yeah, they are probably because they have very little effect on on humans. Like they, like I mentioned before, ticks are a vector for disease. Mites are uh, a pest for uh, agriculture. Um, Spiders, of course, interest humans because they both get rid of pests and they also can present the threat to people because of the venom, which is largely exaggerated, but still, same thing with scorpions. So most arachnids are pretty well studied. Apillions, not so much. So if you're interested in arachnology, if you want to specialize in them, it's probably you'll, you'll probably discover something <laughs> because the, there's just not a, as much literature on them as there are other arachnids. And the same thing goes, and I'll, I'll cover it later, the same thing kind of goes with the, the smaller, more recently discovered arachnids. Um, pseudoscorpions and uh, um, to a lesser extent, sea spiders, which that's that's become a whole thing where, where they fit phylogenically. It's very interesting stuff. Um, that really covers it for Apillions. I thought it, it, I could turn this into a 10 minute video, but that, that really covers it. They're They're interesting. They should be looked at, but yeah, that's that's really about it for them. Uh, like I said, there's not a whole lot known about them. Really, I just covered their, their physiology. Uh, oh, actually, you know what? I can't believe I forgot. Mating is very similar to spiders, you know, patty cake and all that. But uh, interestingly, apillions usually do exhibit maternal behavior for a while. They, uh, they rear their own young, and it's very interesting to see. I don't know if I'll be able to find any actual photos of this. Uh, for the, the video that wouldn't qualify as, as stealing someone's content, so I'm going to be careful about that. But if you do look into it, you will find photographs of Apillion mothers with uh, their young underneath them. Uh, and they, they tend to take care of them until usually the first or second molt after birth. So it's very interesting that uh, you see a class across the board, like I mentioned with scorpions, wherein maternal behavior is exhibited. Um, it seems to me and this is a sweeping generalization, that arachnids are significantly more likely to exhibit maternal behavior, or even paternal behavior, than uh, uh, in insects. You know, you very rarely see it in insects. Um, let's see, there's paternal behavior in water bugs, 
Um, there's a little bit of uh, colony making with aphids, but even that's not so much maternal as much as it's just the way they congregate. Um, with bees, of course, uh, with, with eusocial hymenopterans, you see a lot of uh, class-based hierarchies wherein uh, the young are cared for by their siblings. But, yeah, with, with arachnids, you see a lot more parental care. I find that interesting. And you will not see a more across-the-board uh, and lengthy investment than with Apilions, and that's why I brought it up. Uh, but, yeah, I think that does finally cover it. So, yeah, like, share, subscribe, keep asking questions. Bye.